Here I return to the Christian hell from the 1st to the 20th century by Hypatia Bradler Bonner, published in 1913, at Chapter 5, Visions and Descriptions. One of the fullest and most remarkable descriptions of the tortures of the damned was written by Richard Roller, 1290-1349, who set up as a hermit at Hampole, about four miles from Doncaster, and who was one of the busiest writers of his day. He wrote religious treatises in Latin and English, versified part of the Book of Job, and produced a poem in Northern English dialect in seven books of nearly 10,000 lines, entitled The Prick of Conscience of which more than a thousand lines are devoted to picturing the tortures of the damned. He begins at the very beginning of man's life, and ends only with his punishment or reward after death. The dreadfulness of death and the condition of the dying are dwelt upon at some length. Writers usually depict the struggle for the soul of the dying person as between a good spirit and an evil one, as in figure 14. But Roller is not content with one evil spirit. He tells how devils gather round the dying man and torment and frighten him in their efforts to ravish his soul to hell. Good men as well as vile will be tormented on their deathbeds. At the resurrection, it is interesting to note, everyone will be 32 years and 3 months old. That ought to simplify the census if one is taken, but it is to be feared that it will greatly complicate family relationships. On doomsday, Christ will judge men in the vale of Jehoshaphat. He will sit on a white cloud as doomsman and will appear austere to the wicked, but very pleasing to the righteous. On the day of doom, the earth will quake, the world will burn, and thunder and lightning will strike the wicked. Fifteen accusers will appear against them, of which the first three are conscience, sin, and holy writ, and the last three, Christ's passion, God, and the Trinity. The picture of the awful day of reckoning is painted in minute detail, but we must not linger over it, except to note that every idle word, every idle thought, and every sin committed through ignorance will be judged, and that pagans and Jews will go to hell without judgment. The hermit of Hampole is able to tell us just where hell is. It is in the middle of the earth, and the earth is in the middle of the heavens. It may be likened to the core of an apple, or the yolk of an egg, when it is hard. The pains of hell are without number, and no wit of man can imagine what they are like. But fortunately for us, they have been described in books written by wise clerks, with these wise clerks for a guide, and aided by his own lively imagination, Roller goes into details and explains that there are fourteen general pains suffered by the wicked in hell. Heat, unquenchable endless fire. Cold, so intense that it would freeze a burning mountain. Filth and stink, there shall be mere stink than tongue may tell or heart think. Hunger, such that the wicked shall tear their own flesh. Thirst. Fire, smoke, stench shall be drink to the sinful. Gall of dragons and venom of snakes shall be their wine. There shall be endless hunger and endless thrust. Darkness, so thick that men might grasp it. The sight of devils. The hardiest man in flesh and bone would become mad with fear at the sight of a devil. Yet the sinful are ever looking upon them. They see them through the sparks of fire. Vermin. Horrible, venomous vermin, which live endlessly in the flames of fire and gnaw and suck the sinful. Vermin in hell shall be their clothing, and vermin shall there be their bedding. Beating. Devils strike the sinful with glowing hammers, without ceasing. Gnawing of conscience. The sinful shall ever make lamentation, crying, Alas, alas, and while away. Scalding tears. More tears are shed in hell than there are drops of water in the sea, and these tears shall scald and burn, for they are hotter than molten lead or boiling brass. Shame and disgrace. The picture of shame and disgrace in hell is not very convincing. Bonds of fire. The sinful are bound both hand and foot in burning chains. Their heads are turned downwards and their feet upwards. By strong pains they are continually strained and racked. Despair. With no hope in their hearts, they shall desire death, but death shall flee from them. Besides these, there are many other pains not classed in the foregoing list, for in hell there is more sorrow and woe than all the men of earth, old and young, might think with heart and tell with tongue. There is no peace in hell. 
the devils keep up a doleful din of roaring and yelling, the wicked are pressed together as in an oven, the damned scratch and tear one another's faces, they are full of hatred and the cursing of their fellows, and yet the sight of another's pain is a fresh pain to them. The least pain in hell is greater than all the pain in the world, and the sorrow of the world is joy compared with the pains of hell. When Rolle of Hampole describes the bliss of the chosen in heaven, he is particular in pointing out that they will feel no pity there for the sorrows of those in hell, neither for the father nor the son, neither for the mother nor the daughter, neither for the sister nor the brother. None shall have pity for the other.